So I'm happy to be here today. I'm happy to have my sous chef Ann with me today. She really gave me the ideas uh, for what we're going to do today. And, uh, you know, I, I had asked her volunteer and, and, and graciously said yes. And so I said, well, what do you want to make? And I don't know if she was expecting that question, but, no. uh, <laughs> but um, so she has a, a method to, to save tomatoes. You know, you, if you do cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes, uh, you get a lot of them and probably more than what you can eat right at, at the time um, when you pick them. So she has a method that we're gonna show you of how that you can cook them off with a little balsamic vinegar and um, roast them for a little bit, put them in Ziploc bags, and then you can put them in the freezer and that way when you want them for another time down the line, you just pull them out of the freezer, thaw them out a little bit, and then you've got, got some tomatoes from your garden that can last you throughout the year. And um, that's kind of why I started it. I, I have a, a garden box. In fact, this year I have two boxes back there. And I found out one of the things that grows pretty good back there are cherry tomatoes. And being alone, you don't want to wait and have a, just all the big ones. So last year when I had a bumper crop, I was like, okay, what am I going to do? And I never did this before, and I just researched it. And I found it, and it really, by living alone, it really is something that I like because I like omelets or just, you know, scrambled eggs, put these in and with the seasoning and everything and it really makes a difference. So almost anything that you're cooking, you know, even if you've got a pork chop or a hamburger or whatever, you can take one of these little bags out of the freezer. If you want to nuke it to just defrost it, you don't even have to do that, just put it in the pot and it really puts a lot of spice. Sure, or if you, or if you want to. If you want to put them on a you know salad or something, you can you'll have them for that way too. So thank you so much. I think that's a great idea. Um, and and then uh, you know back when we had kind of asked about doing this, we thought it would be more closer to the harvest time, right? And so another thing that people tend to have a lot of is zucchini. And so okay, well what can we do with zucchini? That's not bread. That's not a muffin. That's not um, just chop it up in the frying pan. You know something. A little bit different but it's also fairly simple and something that you know if you're only got one or two of you in the house to make it, it, so we're gonna make some zucchini fritters um, so it's very simple just a little flour a little egg a little zucchini a little seasoning and really that's about it and then I've got a sauce that will will make uh, to to dip those in um, but you know zucchini fritter you can have it as a afternoon snack you can have it as something to eat with your, you know, your steak and, and in place of a vegetable or in place of a potato, whichever you like, uh, or you know, at any time with you could have it, um, you know, with your fish instead. Of like maybe if you like potato pancakes, it could be similar to like a potato pancake. It's um, for you. So, so we're gonna make those and we'll show you how to do it. Uh, when it's all done, we'll have a little samples. We'll have some, a couple of baggies of tomatoes to share, and then. Um, I'll type a little re the recipes up, and so then I'll send it to Geraldine, and she'll get, get copies made for anybody that cares to have it. It's also we're taping today uh, for you know, it's already cut up. Um, do you do you tend to cut them up? I figured because um, I had the. It the, depends on the tomatoes. I mean, yep. I have uh, one variety of tomatoes that I like. It's called Rapunzel. And they end up, they grow like a long thing like this, and then the tomatoes all just kind of ripen down this one little thing. And they're real little. Some of them can be just like the tip of your finger, and some of them are a little bit bigger, but I like those, so you don't have to cut those. Sure. All the way up to if you have really full-size tomatoes, you could just cut them in cubes and do it. So uh, I think the most important thing is that they have to be nice and ripe. They and have to have that good flavor because putting in the balsamic and then I also put usually some spices on it. I have fresh herbs or garlic powder or even dry Italian spices or something like that. With the really ripe tomatoes, that's what really makes the difference. So I I I got grape tomatoes today and so they're you know they they're in that in between size of small where you don't have to cut, but maybe a little bit bigger where you do cut. And I, so I just cut them right down the, the middle is how I did it today, doing them. So um, we'll get these cut up. And then what happens is 
we'll coat them with some balsamic vinegar. I'll heat the pan up um, to start, and um, Ann's gonna have to tell me because this is her her recipe here, like what they what they look like. I kind of have an idea, um, but you know she'll tell me they're starting to look like they're not done. You'll smell the fragrance and you'll see that they're soft. You know. So you just enough to coat them or drench them? What you... Yeah, I put a little bit more in there because you, you, you're not going to use all of it probably in the pan, but you'll right. get, you know, the flavor. Yeah, that's pretty About good. like that? Okay, yeah. that sounds good. Got my spoon down here. So just going to get them coated. And I didn't bring any other seasoning to, to do because it's very particular for your own taste. But like Ann said, Italian seasoning, dry Italian seasoning on that would be good for just about anything. You know, if you want something more Italian, maybe throw some basil in there. Um, just some salt and pepper is fine. You know, anything that you prefer for flavor would be just fine. So I'm just gonna leave these just with the balsamic. Um, I like that, that alone. Um, it's good, you know, if you just have some of that with some mozzarella cheese and then you have a little caprese salad as well. Get that, it won't take long to get that hot. So what, 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 what's your favorite thing to have with tomatoes? Um, well, I eat a lot of scrambled eggs okay. so, and omelets, so I do like it with that. Is it a way to it, change it, up the it, egg every right, day, right? Right, right, really flavors through. And um, oh, I don't know, I've used them like if I'm making chili or something, or like I said, even if you're just making a, a broiled hamburger, um, oh, just yeah, take a bag of them out and, and when you freeze them, you'll see there's juice in there. And so they're really kind of juicy, so they almost create a sauce that you can use. Um, gosh, I think if you made a grilled cheese sandwich, you'd put them inside of there. Mm -hmm. I that think they would yeah. be really good. So, um, you know, it, it's hard cooking for one, and sometimes you don't want to feel like you want to get out all the spice and everything to do it. And depending on what you use, fresher or uh, dried and a little garlic powder on them, um, it really stays with the wood. It starts smelling the balsamic a little bit, can smell it? Cook, yes, definitely. Um, now, would you suggest, it, seeing as you don't have any um, herbs, maybe put a little salt and pepper on them? Sure, yeah, we can do that. You can also do this in the oven. Because the original recipe I had was for, um, I don't want to say baked or grilled, what is it? Baked, yeah. Baked, mm -hmm. okay. And you can just put it on a, a, a you know, a, like a cookie, sheet? cookie sheet that has the sides on it. And I just put um, parchment paper on there so you don't have to wash it or anything. Because the balsamic vinegar will sort of, I don't want to say caramelize, but it, it sure. thickens a little yeah. bit. Um, as you do it. And so you can get it, they, they taste a little different when you roast them like that. It kind of brings a little bit more of the flavor of the balsamic vinegar out, I think. But um, I've started doing this because sometimes it's easy. You only have like a little bit of, of tomatoes or something. And like you said, you know, you buy, even if you buy just a carton like that, how long does it take us to use a carton up? And then they get kind of, you know, yucky. So. Even if you bought a carton of it and you put half of them like this, it's easy to do it on the stove. But if you got the, a grandchild or a child who has the big garden or the friend that wants to drop off a bunch of tomatoes, this is an easy way to, to use them up. Exactly. It's like over a pasta, too. Yeah, I think that would be... Yeah. yeah. That would be pretty good. Pasta or rice. Or that yeah, would be, pasta or rice, yeah. There would be another way you could do this is... Um, don't like balsamic vinegar, some people don't care for that flavor, just use a little olive oil and, and cook them down in the olive oil and add whatever seasoning that you want that way, uh, or just the plain tomatoes. And um, you know, and then when you're talking about pasta, you could just boil some pasta, um, put some butter in the pasta once it's done, and, and toss that and then put your tomatoes in, and then you'd have a nice little uh, pasta dish your tomatoes are already soft and cooked, so <laughs> I got a <laughs> cough of this smoke thing. Well, I think those are just about, about what we're looking for. I think that's about right, yep. 
So, so one more time around so they can see how nice they are absolutely. all kind of yep. shrinking down. He's a good chef, huh? <laughs> You've got a good teacher. <laughs> to do these fritters, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, if it's something you want to make, you know, in the middle of winter, uh, and you're going to the store to get these ingredients, I always find it to be best to get the ingredients the day of. Um, that produce has already been in the store for a couple of days. Uh, so your best produce is going to be, you know, if you're going to make something with produce, getting it that, that day of as best that you can tends to be your best bet. Obviously, it's not always feasible that way, but the freshest ingredients you can, can work with when you're using fresh ingredients typically is a good, good uh, rule of thumb. Uh, so for this recipe, I, I, did, I didn't make it up myself. I kind of had to find one because I had different variations and I found one that I felt was, um, had a lot of good fresh herbs in it, some, some you know, fresh zucchini, some onions. Um, so what we've got to start with is a, a little bit of basil and uh, fresh thyme chopped up in the, in the pan. And I've got some lemon zest. Uh, and we've got the zucchini, some green onion. And um, what we're doing here is we've got the zucchini shredded up. Uh, this is a great kitchen tool if you don't have one. It's <laughs> it works wonders, you know. You, you, you grate the zest of the lemon, you can grate the, the zucchini, you can slice it if you need to slice it. I love that we're trying to get out as, as much liquid uh, from the zucchini as we can to start with. Zucchini is very wet if you just cut it. It's like a cucumber. It'll be very wet if you just took a slice and, and ate it. So in order to, to get them to kind of stick together and to be fritters, try to get as much of the, the liquid out as, as you can. Um, just got a piece of paper towel. I'm going to use that in a minute. So I'm going to just, just cut that end off, cut that end off. And then my handy dandy grater here. Just I go for just the big, the big side here. Of course, great here. Yeah. Your mother used to have one like that. Yeah, I still have one. That's what I used to have it. Yeah. <laughs> How many have got their mother's grater? <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, we've got a couple of these. Yeah. So, because the salt will bring out the juice, bring out the water in it. And if you're in a hurry, I mean, not that we are, but if you're in a hurry, you can press it with the paper towel even more. Try to get, like I said, try to get, just to kind of get as much juice out of it as you can. If you're making a cake, they will shred a zucchini. Would you, to measure it out, would you take the juice out first? Or? I, I, I typically would because it's going to, you know, it, it probably won't matter a whole lot, but you want to, you probably want to try to get the liquid out of it um, before you bake it. Otherwise, you know, you're going to kind of have that runny middle inside. So, so let this sit just a little bit. So, so. I'm just going to cut up some onion here. Scott, how many inches of grain did you use? Um, so I probably left about an inch at the end. Uh, okay. Just towards the end, they start to get a little dry, a little crumbly, whatever. So um, you, you just kind of have to see how your, your particular onion is that time. It needs a little. Am I doing everything okay? Okay. <laughs> Just may have to make sure. We're going to do three, three eggs into here, um, a cup and a half of flour. Um, I did six, um, well, I did probably nine green onions. Uh, and then I've got the, uh, I got about three teaspoons of ba chopped basil, minced basil, um, a teaspoon and a half of, of the minced thyme. And actually, the thyme, I, you know, instead of cutting that all up, those stems you don't really want. So again, another thing to use your grater for, take the stem and you find what, what hole of the, of the 
greater works best and you just pull it through and your leaves will fall off real easy. So um, it's just a, you know, you can do that, like parsley, you can use your, your coriander, stick it through and, and it, it'll pull those leaves off uh, that way too. So just a little time saver. I mean, you can do it with your, you know, your fingers as well. It depends on how, how stiff those stems are. So, um, and then some, some lemon zest. I already, I already got the, the lemon zested. We're going to zest another one for when we make the sauce. And then um, some salt and pepper. So throw some salt and pepper in there. What did it say? A quarter teaspoon? Yeah. Is it a teaspoon? <laughs> um, salt and pepper is what you feel. I mean, you, salt, not as much. Um, because if something is way salty, it's hard to fix that flavor. So, um, see, it's going to get in my nose again, though. Oh, I'm disappointed. Not a one-handed, though. Oh, you want me to do yeah, dancing? Yeah, oh. yeah. Come on. You want the whole uh, nine yards, Joe? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if you expect me to flip them in the air, yeah, no problem, so. no, 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 no. being judged on the technique then too. Um, We're a tough crowd. Hey, that's okay. I don't, I don't mind. Um, and actually, just got to get that, uh, that egg beat up a little bit. I might need another one. Just we'll see what it looks like after I get the flour in there. Because I'm not baking. It doesn't have to be perfectly level, right? If you're baking, you want to make sure you've got the right amount of flour and it's Pretty close to the cup there, and then it was a, a cup and a half, I believe. Yeah, a cup and a half. So again, I'm just gonna go about a half a cup there. But then, like I said, I gotta. I might need to add a little egg. It's always easier to add. Probably add a little egg to it. That's fine. Except for when I get the. Zucchini in there, it's going to be even more wet, right? So, no, you're just fine. You need a bigger spoon. Yeah, I forgot. A bigger spoon. You know what? This will work. Yeah, this is better. Oh, there we go. Now we're good. Does anyone else call those scrapers? Rather than My mother did. My mom did. Yeah, it, you know, it's probably 50 50 in the kitchen. Um, scraper, spatula. Now you didn't make a sample of these, did you? I did not. Oh, so we're we're on the cutting edge. We don't know what this is going to come. Yeah, out. it could be awful. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as we fry it, they're nice and well, golden brown. Right. I mean, that's kind of how the I sauce felt. on them. What could be bad? I mean, I mean, if you fry anything in oil. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how bad can it be, right? I mean, <laughs> oh, you got, a, you got a date coming up or something? <laughs> 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 you don't want all my secrets. No, 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 no. So. She promised a uh, zucchini fritter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You want it to form, to, to hold it. Yeah, together. right. So do they fry them too? Sh sure, and essentially that's what we're going to do. We're going to have it oil in the pan and, and and do it that way. But yes, if you had a, you know, like a fry daddy in your, you know, your room, uh, your apartment, you certainly, you could do that. Yeah, that's do you think this, if you, if you put some fresh herbs in there too, if you want it? Yep, and I do. I have some uh, basil and oh, yeah, some uh, thyme in here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and the and the lemon as well. So, um, you know, the lemon zest anyway. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. So I'm just gonna, you know, get get enough oil in the bottom of the pan. Okay. So that when you drop these in, they, they're going to kind of cook on the bottom, and then we'll flip it over one time. Um, so it's about four to six minutes on each side. 
Turn that on. Turn that down. Oops. Okay. okay. Do you want to do this? No. No. You're doing oh. good. Oh, I don't want to take your job away. You know, we want to volunteer for the next one, so I don't want to work too hard. Oh, well, yeah, that's right. Is it? <laughs> you know, you might, you might scare your next uh, sous chef from the right. way, you know? So I just have some sour cream here. You can use um, uh, Greek yogurt if you prefer something a little healthier. Um, you can use regular yogurt, but uh, plain obviously you don't want like strawberry yogurt. That would be a little silly, but um, just get some sour cream in there, and then minced garlic. I cheated and got the garlic already minced up, but just some minced garlic. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of sour cream. Now I'll be sleeping alone tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mince at the door on your way out. <laughs> but you know what? Zucchini in itself doesn't have a lot of flavor, right? So. If you're making a sauce dip it with, you gotta taste something, right? Is that mustard? Uh, minced garlic. Minced garlic. Yep. And then, He's gonna give again. us the recipe, Karen. Oh, he is. Yeah. Now you're telling me. Cut it, we're gonna use some of the juice too. Oh, we're gonna get some zucchini in there too. About how much zest did you put in there? One, one lemon worth. Oh. I know they do it stuff like this and the seeds all end up in their hands. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 That's because they probably had somebody to, to squeeze it for them. Oh, you did it. Well, I, I ain't squeezing it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's the sauce. It's just oil. You can tell it's getting warm uh, a couple of ways. You, you can see it. It kind of gets a little shimmer on the top. It gets a little different color than when you put it in the pan. Um, but also another way, and I do this every time still when I make pancakes, is take a little bit of the batter and you drop it in there and if it bubbles fast and starts cooking then you know that your oil is hot enough. It's just about there. So this is actually probably the perfect scoop for this. I fill it about three quarters, three quarters full. You know, flatten it out a little bit once you once you drop it in, just so it cooks better that way. And this is just about you know however however big of a frying pan you have, how many you can fit in the pan. There's no. I suppose you could. I don't know if I would, but. Uh, Sure, why not, right? So they're just they're just frying, um, and I'm not going to walk around with the hot oil. I don't trust myself that way. But uh, if, if you're, you're welcome, if you feel like taking a look at what it looks like in the pan, you most certainly can. But the, um, just going to fry four or five minutes on each side, uh, probably four or five minutes on the first side, depending on how deep your oil is and then you know, flip it over to get that, that next side brown. Um, it's really what it takes. What do you think? Needs a couple more minutes, but they're looking good, right? Yeah. Now see, I probably would like them a little bit thinner. A little thinner? Like yeah, those the lower ones, a little bit thinner, I sure. think. Sure. Because they'll take a little bit longer to, to make sure they're cooked all the way right. through. So could you still do that now when they're it's getting a little bit, bit? It's getting a little bit hard on yeah, the bottom. Yeah, because they're firmed up on the yeah. bottom already. 
but um, they're holding yeah, in, in my little boxes out there. And one thing that I like is I make chai butter. Oh yeah. And I like to have fish and just you know put that. Just put one of those. I, I when I freeze it, I freeze it in pads. Mm -hmm. So I can just take one little pad out, put that in there, and put the, your fish in there. And boy, it's just. You know, I, I do it with uh, some basil also, but I really like it with the chives. That, that does sound very good. Um, much like the sage butter we were talking about for the cauliflower, right? You can do, mm -hmm. do it that way too. And um, yeah, that, that's a very good point. You can, there's so many different ways to use, to use herbs up that um, it's, it's always good if you've got the, the time or the know-how to, to do those yourself, for sure. So These are they're looking pretty good. Turn me up. Well, and since you are my... My assistant here, or I was your assistant today. Yeah. You, you get first dibs. I do. Yeah. Well, I was just counting. You got four of them in there, so just to get a taste right now, while well, he may, does another thing, maybe we could just cut these in fourths, and then everyone can eat sure. at the at the same time. Yeah. I have five, so that oh. makes it even better. Maybe we just okay. cut it in half. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that, and then you can have a taste with some of the. And then, the I'll, sauce keep, and then I'll keep making cooking. it. And uh, he's got quite a bit. Yeah, we're going to make sure he cook, cooks it all up. So maybe we'll uh, end up with a little appetizer for our dessert dinner, for our yeah. dinner tonight. But so that's, can everybody see that a little bit? So that's the end of the, the cooking show piece of it. I'm going to stick around and cook these off in here. You're welcome to stick around as long as you'd like. I really do appreciate everybody taking their time and coming to watch watch our show today. I really want to say thank you to Ann uh, for uh, agreeing to be my partner today.